It's another edition of Time About the Movies. Uh, we're looking at the last weekend of April 1990, April 27th. Uh, we got four movies to look at, so let's go ahead and get right to it. We'll start with the first movie here. William Friedkin returning to horror after The Exorcist. Probably not the best movie to make a return to. It's, um... If you know this movie from Cisco and Ebert fame, you know what I'm going to talk about here. Anyway, let's talk about The Guardian. So yeah, the villain of this movie wants to feed kids to this tree that comes to life. She worships a tree, and you can pretty much see from the trailer how stupid this movie is. And I think if you saw the Cisco and Eva review for this, you could pretty much guarantee you could pretty much see what they were talking about in that tra in that review in this trailer. It's just it takes a concept that could work for a regular supernatural horror film, but just. It takes it way too seriously by having a killer tree be the monster in the movie. It's just like, yeah, it does. Yeah, this is a disaster. This is a horrible, horrible movie. So much so that Freakin wanted to disassociate himself from the release on any way, shape, or form. And in fact, when this aired on cable, his the directing credit was named to Alan von Smithy. Of course, Alan Smithy was the name that directors used back in the day to. This allowed the movies that they were involved with, but even though the the trailer you saw there clearly shows that Freakin directed this movie. And, um, yeah, this is a pretty bad movie. It's a movie that you can pretty much tell it's bad right from the get-go. It has the typical horror movie tropes. The cops don't believe the... The cops take the... the cops don't believe the, the good people. They take the side of the guilty. The bad guys... The, the bad guys are very stupid. The, their content is their goal is pretty stupid the fact that they have to a tr the tree is a villain in a movie that's supposed to be taken seriously it's just like just a what a mess of a movie it's hard to believe that Sam even though actually I take that back Sam Raimi was actually involved with this movie before he w dropped out to do Dark Man Sam Raimi probably could have made this work because of course he made Evil Dead but not when you have a director like William Freakin, and this is supposed to be taken more seriously, but, um... I think I pretty much said, it, said all that needs to be said about this movie. The Guardian is pretty bad. It's just... It's a movie that's just so bad on so many levels, and you can see why. It's a mess. It's a mess of a movie. Just avoid it like the plague. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, which is a much different movie than The Guardian. Maybe stupid, but not as stupid as The Guardian, I can tell you that. It's Space Invaders. For years, scientists have speculated that there was intelligent life in outer space. Now comes definitive proof that there is no such thing. Come on, open this baby up and let's see what you'll do. Hit it, Plasmy! <laughs> now, five misguided Martians have landed in Big Bean, Illinois. Come on, let's kick some grits and butt. <laughs> Looks like you hit something. On Halloween night. Prepare to die, Earth scum! <laughs> Maybe later. Have fun, boys. They think they're any Halloween costume. What a bunch of morons! Perhaps a taste of this death. I'll just have to remove those little heads of yours. And now they're up to their antennas.
is in. What did I step in? You know how bad that's gonna smell? In trouble. There are five of us and four billion of them. Well, I know you boys. They're my cousins from California. Oh. Let's go. Let's go. I thought you were going 3,000 miles per hour. There goes my insurance. They're not really bad. They're just stupid. Join Captain Victor. I said prepare to die, Earth. Lieutenant Blasney. I thought this was a bad idea. Blue the robot slave. Uh, no, Mom's gonna hear about this. And all their spaced out friends. <laughs> as they take off on an adventure that's not quite out of this world. Who taught you to drive, you moron? Spaced Invaders. It's hard to believe this is the third Aliens Come to Earth movie that we've looked at on this show so far. We've had Earth Girls Are Easy. Last week, last time around, we had Martians Go Home. This one's not quite Earth, Earth Girls Are Easy. This one's not quite Martians Go Home. It's kind of right in the middle. It's not a good movie, but it's at least trying. You can at least see the effort being put into this movie. It's not, uh, it's not really all that great. It doesn't really have a whole lot there that makes you laugh. I don't think a lot of people, uh, adults would get into this. This is clearly made for more for kids. But like, unlike Martians Go Home, at least this one actually looks like it's trying to do something. It looks like it's trying to be something different and unique. But um, it just doesn't quite have that same spark. And this is directed by Patrick B. Johnson, who would later go on to do what I think is a much better movie for kids, Baby's Day Out. But we'll get to that when we get to 94, when that movie came out. But like I said, you can clearly see that they are trying here. They are trying to at least make something enjoyable here, but I don't think it doesn't quite work. You can still see that they're trying to copy a little bit of Beetlejuice's success, like the Little Monsters did, where they have like the fast-talking creatures and all that kind of stuff that think they're funny, but the writing is just not that good. It's just it's a it's a very tough act to follow. I mean, like most of these movies that try to copy Beetlejuice did not do so well. Not a lot of them were great successes, but you can at least see in this one, and even in something like Little Monsters, they were at least trying to do something different, but it just didn't quite work in the end, so that's my thoughts on Space Invaders. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, and that is Q&A. Hey, Mom. First case is an assistant district attorney began with my phone call at 3.05 a.m. Tell us, uh, tell us in your own words, tell us what happened. I saw him reach. I saw a flash of metal. Gun was with me. I hit him in the head. So I go outside. I'm not a big guy who pulls his badge. And they say, hey, nobody moves. You've got a right to remain silent as long as you can stay in the pit. <laughs> Give me a Q&A on this. There's no statute of limitations on murder. I'm going to bury your boy, Brennan. But legally, I got my proof. So I break a couple of heads. I mean, you lose control of this jungle, you're finished. But it gets rough sometimes. If you take shortcuts, they'll never hurt us in court. Just suppose Ben comes up wrong. Judges are two lawyers and the Kenny DAs are making it in. You take a freaking hamburger and it's good by badge, gun, and pension. Is it dirty? You can always help, right? Not if you're clean. Get out! Get out right now! Q and A. Nick Nolte. Timothy Hutton. Armand DeSanti. A film by Sidney Lumet. So this is Sidney Lumet's second film he made in the past year. In the past six months, actually, because Family Business only came out in December of 89. And this came out in April of 90, so... I don't know what the story is with this movie. I don't know if it was a movie that was held over or something. Production fell behind or something like that, but... It's weird to have two movies from the same director come out around the same same six month period. It also has the same cinematographer too, so maybe they shot both of these movies at the same time or something. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but but um, those look promising though. I mean, Nick Nolte, Timothy Hutton, Armand Asante looks pretty decent. Heard some good reviews on it. I mean, it could be something worth watching. I haven't seen it before, so I can't really comment too much on it, but. Um, Trailer definitely looks like it has some potential to it, so maybe I'll check it out one day. Q&A. Uh, another film from Sid and the Met. So, let's go ahead and move on to the last movie. Zalman King's Wild Orchid. 
From the creators of Nine and a Half Weeks comes the most eagerly awaited film of the year. Enter a world of desperate love and stunning sensuality. Enter the world of Wild Orchid. Miss Reed, if you're chosen for this position, what would you say if I told you you'd be expected to leave for Rio de Janeiro in the morning? You're going to make a lot of money, honey. You might as well learn how to enjoy it. It's all play money anyway. A young woman leaves home for the first time, unaware of the passion awakening within her. I have something for you to wear. Wear it. A man struggling to unleash his emotions. You're a strange man. A curious man. What if I told you that I dressed you up and pushed you at him? Just to see if he'd respond to you. Any different than he has to be. I'm not used to women running away from me. A woman learning to feel from a man who can't touch. I can't begin to tell you what I'm feeling right now. Sure. You know the rules of the game. And if you didn't want to play them, maybe you wouldn't be here. In the heat of Brazil, she invites his passion. We all have to lose ourselves sometimes to find ourselves, don't you think? In a moment of desire, she touches his soul. Mickey Rourke, Jacqueline Bissett. Why don't you take off his pants? And introducing Carrie Otis, Wild Orchid. I mean, honestly, you could probably call this movie what it really is, which is basically... The sequel to Nine and a Half Weeks, you could have just called it Ten Weeks or Ten and a Half Weeks, because it's pretty much the same thing as Nine and a Half Weeks was. It really is. I mean, you have Mickey Rourke playing sort of a similar character to to what he did in Nine and a Half Weeks, and even though this is directed by the writer of that movie, Solomon King, it really does feel like the same movie over again. But unlike Nine and a Half Weeks, where you actually had some clever, clever work, writing in there and some interesting ways of filming the sex scenes. This is just basically a generic, cliched, erotic thriller. Not even a good one. Like, like this is the type of movie that people made after Basic Instinct thinking they're going to have the next Basic Instinct. This is like, this is like, I mean, this is pretty much like the, it's the people that think that they're going to have another nine and a half weeks type of success, but they don't have the same writing ability or the same acting ability to match that movie, because Basic Instinct is probably the best erotic thriller of all time. I don't know if I can think of any other ones that could match that movie, but um, Nine and a Half Weeks was pretty good too, but Wild Orchid's just kind of like, it's like, what it's, Wild Orchid kind of feels like one of those softcore movies they used to have on Cinemax at late, late at night, but they don't do that anymore. That's what that felt like to me, but like, nowhere near as good. It's just kind of like, it's just there. It's just there to be like a team. It's it's not even it doesn't even have a reason to be there. The acting isn't really all that good. Uh, the writing isn't all that good. The visuals are very nice. It can, I mean, it's Rio de Janeiro. Of course, it's gonna look nice. But what's the point? Like, what's the whole point of me coming to this except to be like aroused by what's going on on screen? It's just like, yo, know, you gotta give me something more than that. I mean, give me something. Give me at least some clever, cl something clever or interesting or th an interesting way to put it together or anything like that. But I mean, at least give me something other than that, but... Yeah, other than that, though, this is not a very good movie. This is a movie that just... It just doesn't have that same spark that Nine and a Half Weeks did. And, like, it didn't get good reviews. It didn't do decent... It didn't do good business at the box office. And yet they made another sequel to... And that they made a sequel to it the year later. I don't get it, man. I just don't get it with this movie, so... That's Wild Orchid. I don't get it, but apparently somebody liked it to make another movie... But we'll get to that one when we get to that one in the next year. And with that said, that's going to wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. We move into May next. We have a couple. We have six movies to look at, and it's going to be another one of those weeks where I never seen most of these movies, so I won't have too much to talk about. Uh, we'll have Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, Short Time, uh, Daddy's Dying, Who's Got the Will, Last Exit to Brooklyn, Tie Me Up, Tie Me Down, Happy Together, and The Feud. That's seven movies, actually. And, uh, like I said, haven't seen any of these movies, quite honestly, so... 
Could be another could be another quick week to talk about movies, so to be on the lookout for that tomorrow. Other than that, though, thank you guys for watching. If you do like this video and you want to see more videos like this, check out the playlist on the next page. Check out the previous episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the for the newest episode. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And until then, take care.